Uh, Public Safety Minister Bill Blair, Justice Minister David Lametti, and the head of Canada's spy agency David Vigneault are responding to a major decision today from a federal court that there were institutional failings between the spy agency and the Department of Justice. Let's listen in. As mentioned by Minister Blair, we worked very hard with colleagues at Public Safety and the Department of Justice to draft a legislative solution. The National Security Act of 2017 has addressed this, is this issue by providing CSIS with the ability to conduct these activities within a clear legal framework, modeled on that already in place by, for law enforcement. But beyond that solution in law, we have taken a significant number of concrete actions to address the court's concerns over the candor uh, issue in this matter. All of these are underway, uh, though they are significant efforts that will take time. In response to the court's concern, I commission a review of CSIS, of CSIS candor obligations. We are currently in the process of implementing transformative change in line with the recommendations of this review and are ensuring that it's properly resourced with a dedicated project team. We have created a dedicated unit specifically charged with ensuring the, our disclosure obligations to the federal court and are well understood and met during the course of national security investigations. We have delivered extensive training and are continuing to ensure that all designated employees have a full understanding of their obligation under the justification framework provided by the National Security Act of 2017. De plus, conformément aux récentes instructions du ministre en matière de collecte et de Moreover, we have begun to collaborate with public safety. We have developed a public safety CSIS framework with the overarching goal of ensuring transparency and accountability. The Department of Justice, the National Security and Intelligence Review Agency, the National Security and, and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians, and the Intelligence Commissioner, and welcome their continued insight in to ensure that the concerns raised by the, raised by the federal courts are addressed. CSIS must operate in a very complex geopolitical landscape where sophisticated technology is widely available to actors hostile to Canada and our way of life. It is important that we ensure that we have the tools and authorities required of a modern intelligence agency. This work is never finished. Keeping pace with changes in the legal, technological and threat environment will ensure that we continue to fulfill our mandate of keeping Canada and Canadians safe and do so in a way that is consistent with Canada's values and the trust that Canadian place in us. In closing, I would like to reiterate that all CSIS employees have a very important responsibility. They are dedicated professional and work tirelessly to keep us safe. I want to take a moment to thank them all. Merci. Thank you, ministers. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Directeur. This is a critical decision of the court, and the Department of Justice and myself take it very seriously. Within justice that resulted in this outcome. In order to perform its important role, the federal court must be able to count on justice and CSIS to bring before it the facts it needs to decide whether to issue a warrant to authorize investigation into threats to Canada's security. Here, the federal court did not get all the facts it needs in this particular case. We must and will do better. For several years, CSIS relied on Crown immunity as a defense for potential illegal activities. During this time, justice advice evolved in this area, indicating to CSIS the vulnerability of this defense. Justice recommended that new legislation was needed. Bill C-59, the National Security Act, which was introduced in June 2017 and became law in June 2019, addresses this issue. However, it was in January 19 that Justice Canada and CSIS determined that CSIS could no longer rely on this defense. And as such, as the director just said, CSIS immediately suspended all such activity. La Cour dit que nos avis doivent être plus clairs. The court has stated that our information must be clearer. The decision also indicates that our method for managing legal risk does, is not appropriate 
to the practices of CSIS's activities. We agree and have already begun an exhaustive and in-depth review as well as an update to our legal risk management framework in order to improve the way we evaluate and communicate legal risks. The court has also stated that our communications were not given early enough. It also stated that litigators and legal counsel did not share the information and counsel at the time when they should have. While it is understandable that when dealing with top secret information that is only shared on a need to know basis, information practices can be challenging. But we agree that this can never be a justification for not ensuring that the court has all the facts before it when considering a warrant application. We continue addressing these silos and are improving our information sharing practices. The court has raised duty of candor concerns before. While we have been working with CSIS to implement earlier recommendations to address these concerns, we need to and can do better together to make all the changes needed. And of course, I look forward to the recommendation that the NSRA review will provide. I also welcome the advice that the external advisor will give to my department and the minister on the implementation of this recommendation. The rule of law and duty of candor, the responsibility to be truthful before the court, are foundations of the legal profession. These foundations are at the core of the legal advice we provide to government departments and agencies. I know that the culture of justice is to act with honesty, integrity, professionalism, and I know also that all employees understand and respect the rule of law, and I'm proud of the work they do. J'espère que cette décision et l'examen à venir I hope that this decision and the review to come will enable us to further improve our methods of offering legal advice, particularly to clients with national security mandates, improve labor relations, and offer a better working relationship with our client departments and agencies, and in particular to ensure that we are worthy of the public's confidence in this area. I hope that this decision and the external review and advice to come will allow us to do even better. I am convinced that the Department of Justice is up to the task. Thank you. <coughs> we will now open the floor for questions. As a reminder, please limit yourself to one question and one follow-up. Please begin your question by identifying yourself, naming the media outlet you represent, as well as who your question is being addressed to. We'll begin with questions over the phone. Operator, please proceed with our first question. Thank you. Merci. Please press star one at this time if you have a question. Veuillez appuyer sur étoile 1 maintenant pour poser une question. The first question, la première question, is de Jim Bronskill from the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. La parole est à vous. Hello. Uh, the ruling is quite clear. Uh, Reliance was placed on Crown immunity uh, despite the service having been advised by senior counsel in the context of a revision to the ministerial direction that bestowing Crown immunity on CSIS is not consistent with the CSIS Act. The ruling goes on to say, nonetheless, the service continued to rely on Crown immunity, doing so in the face of unambiguous direction from the minister that the service must observe the rule of law. Will anyone lose their job or be disciplined over this breach? Well, Jim, if I, if I may, I'd, this is Bill Blair, and I'd like to, to, to answer that question. First of all, um, as, as we've indicated, this, this was an evolving and complex area of law. And, and, and in my experience and, and in, in my review of all of the, the circumstances leading up to this decision, I believe that at all times people were acting in good faith and, and in, in an effort to fulfill their responsibilities to uphold the rule of law. We also acknowledge and, and are grateful for the, the finding of the court. That, and, but, but I think it's important to articulate the work that was done in response um, when, when the service became aware 
that the the the, the, the actions may be uh, in in violation of of that rule of law. They immediately halted operations. That was in January of 2019. The government had already taken significant actions with the implementation of the National Security Act introduced in in 2017. And in September of, of 2019, uh, my predecessor, Minister Goodall, uh, issued an order to strengthen the ministerial oversight of CSIS activities, with, with, which included requirements of them to inform the, the ministry of uh, their activities, including those which posed a high risk, and health, enhancing reporting requirements to ensure that CSIS's duty of candor to the federal court is fulfilled. I also would want to acknowledge that the, the, the director of CSIS and all of his staff have been working very diligently to begin implementing a number of very concrete measures that have, are being put in place to address the duty of candor responsibilities that the federal court decision underscores. Um, a number of very significant steps have been taken, and, and, and I believe that responsibility for the, 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 the actions identified by the court as deficient is is to to fix that which is 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 was unacceptable to the court. I have been very confident in in the work that has been undertaken, both by officials at CSIS but also at Justice Canada, who have very much acknowledged and respected the decisions and the direction of the court, and they've made a very sincere effort, in my opinion, to seek uh, legal advice and 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 recommendations to assist them in the, that implementation, and they have submitted quite fulsomely to the oversight of, of the, and, and CIRA, NC COPS, um, and the Public Safety Minister and the Minister of Justice um, as required under the Act. And, and, and so, you know, we acknowledge that, that there, needs, there needs to be improvement, but, but, but let us also acknowledge that an enormous amount of work has gone into this. And, and, and I think what underlines that, and, for, and, to, and I think Canadians can be reassured at all times, CSIS and Justice Canada acted in good faith. And, and, and continue to work diligently to address the court's concerns. We now have greater clarity from the courts as exactly what is required, and we are absolutely committed to, to addressing those deficiencies and making the improvements that are required. Uh, Mr. Bronskill, I can add uh, that I received a report uh, from Minister Blair's predecessor, Minister Goodale, uh, under Section 20 uh, of the uh, of the Act, uh, which I considered and which I also uh, received external advice upon from uh, Justice Eleanor Cronk, uh, who is a retired uh, Justice of the Ontario Court of Appeal, and uh, based on that, based on all of this information uh, and the legal advice that I obtained. Uh, and, and my analysis, I, I determine that it is not in the public interest uh, that matters uh, be identified, that, that any, any individuals from CSIS be referred for prosecution. Thank you, Ministers. Jim, follow up. Uh, in one case, CSIS paid an individual known to be uh, facilitating or carrying out terrorism uh, an amount totaling up to $25,000 over a few years. Uh, this was illegal under the criminal code. Uh, how does CSIS justify giving tens of thousands of dollars to a terrorist? Well, Jim, on operational matters, I'll, I'll defer to the, to, to, to the director, but, but let's be clear. I think the director's made it very clear, and, and the courts have also acknowledged that the, that the steps that were taken, although clearly... Um, have been determined by the courts to have been um, unlawful and, and uh, not, not according to the rule of law. But at the same time, they, they have been, um, th those types of, 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 of payments for, you know, expenses that a source may, may undertake or the use of a cell phone or even paying for a meal, those things uh, under law now and, and under the regime that we put in place with, with this National Security Act must be reported to the courts, and but 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 at all times these are our normal practices in the conduct of, of the investigations, all in, intended to ensure that, that the safety and security of Canadians are being maintained, um, and and I ha I I have confidence in that work. It it is you know subject to, to considerable oversight and scrutiny. Um, I I think clearly there needs to be greater candor. Uh, the courts have identified that, that these, these issues must be disclosed to them. I think we've taken some very significant steps uh, through the National Security Act to put in a, a justica legal justification framework so that these uh, matters may be more appropriately identified to the court. 
Um, but but I but I, I believe that that it is not inconsistent with the normal course of the duties that have been performed quite ably by by our security services and the national security establishment over many many years. In uh, can add uh, one thing to uh, this uh, this question. Uh, each and every operation of CSIS uh, requires a uh, review, a, a review of different types of risk. And in this specific case, I will not go into the details. Uh, the details of this are classified, but I can tell you that you know we have, uh, and my predecessors in this case have you know reviewed the details of this operation, the risk that the uh, the different individuals involved represented to the safety and security of Canadians, and I've made the decision again based on on the pro procedure and protocol that existed at the time to carry out this operation, always under the um, the notion that you know the Crown immunity uh, was. Uh, Applicable in this instance. Thank you. Uh, operator, next question. Thank you. As a reminder, please press star one for any question. De nouveau, n'hésitez pas à appuyer sur étoile 1 pour poser une question. And the next question, la prochaine question, is de Carmen Freeze from the Global Mail. Please go ahead. Um, yeah, uh, Director Vigneault, the, the, the court ruling called you a director for approving 10 potentially illegal activities at a time when you knew or should have known that those were illegal activities. It also questions whether you have moral authority given that you put your own intelligence officers at risk of potential prosecution um, for doing things that you knew or should have known to be illegal. So. Uh, I'm wondering how you would react to these characterizations in the judicial ruling. And, um, you know, it's uh, one of your predecessors resigned in the 80s for getting one, uh, making errors in admission in one wiretap application. This, this affects several. So, um, given that you've been found in a judicial ruling to have approved somewhere between 11 and 99 potentially illegal activities and to um, expose your own intelligence officers to risk of prosecution. Um, do you expect to continue to lead the service? So uh, I'll take uh, the question, Minister. Um, the, uh, I've been quite clear in the, my statement that uh, the activities that we have undertaken have done been the guise of uh, protecting Canadians from the threats of terrorism. In this specific case, uh, we have said that you know, we have carried out these activities with the protection of the Crown immunity. When it became clear in January 2019 that this, the Crown immunity was not uh, available protection anymore for these activities, I immediately ordered that we cease these activities and we carried out our counterterrorism operations in a different way. And I want to applaud the work of the men and women of CSIS, the people of CSIS who have been able to find, you know, innovative ways of being able to collect the uh, uh, crucial intelligence that is at uh, play here. Uh, Minister uh, Lemedi has also addressed the, um, the question of the report, Section 20 report. I referred to the uh, to the this, these matters to uh, Minister Goodale uh, at the time, and uh, I myself and my senior executive, uh, my head of operations, and my predecessor, the previous director of CSIS, we took accountability for the actions of all employees. We didn't shy away from that accountability, and we provided that uh, Section 20 report to Minister Goodale at the time. Follow up. Well, I, I'm wondering why in um, January 2019, because this really makes it clear there was a, a lot of paper flying around justice to the minister, to the previous director, to the current director, uh, to various ministries that, that uh, you know, these, you this violated law to make these payments to provide your cell phones, these $25,000. You also had live legislation before the court where this government told Parliament that the thesis operatives, intelligence operatives, and officers and operatives were exposed if they didn't have this law. And that's why Parliament passed this law. So given that, I'm wondering how you can, we can all say that clarity came only in January 2019 when the, the judge's ruling suggests that uh, you should have known well before that, that the um, activities in question were contentious or, or likely illegal. 
as I've said uh, clearly in my statement, that uh, the uh, the legal advice uh, was clarified, and uh, we came to a conclusion with the Department of Justice in 2019 that we could not rely on Crown immunity. And that's why they uh, immediately asked that these operations uh, ceased, and we find other ways to be uh, find a way to protect Canadians uh, to collect the, by collecting the intelligence in other ways. So um, at that point, uh, the Parliament was already considering uh, C-59, um, but there was a, a period of a number of months where we could not undertake uh, these operations. And, and Colin, if I uh, if I may also just briefly follow up uh, it it had been clearly identified that that these operations did constitute a high legal risk and that was acknowledged in the introduction of bill c59 that we were looking at ways in which these risks could be better managed through a a a, a legal justification regime um, put in place through that national security act and and so it was it was when the the justice canada and uh, CSIS came back to, to the minister of the day and said that, that the, these actions were likely unlawful. They, they made the decision to immediately halt those operations. And until the, the legislation passed and was put in place to establish that, that justification. And so I, from the outset, I think there was an acknowledgement from the service and from, from, from justice of the, the legal risk. There was a very sincere uh, effort to, to manage that risk through legislation and when the Service and Justice Canada determined that that risk crossed the threshold and, 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 and was likely unlawful, they took immediate actions to, 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 to terminate that risk and to, and to cease those operations um, until the new legislation could, could be put in place. Um, as I've indicated, this is, this is an area of complex law. And 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 uh, you know the concerns um, were were being identified and and responded to, I believe, in a, in a in a in a thoughtful way, um, and 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 with this, this, the decision in, in this matter today, uh, we have we have greater clarity and we have already begun to take very significant steps to ensure that we uphold our duty of candor in, as CSIS and that we have continued to uphold the rule of law. Thank you, Minister. We'll now go to the room, uh, Mackenzie. Hi, uh, Mackenzie Gray with CTV News. My first question is for the CSIS director. Um, your previous predecessors, uh, Dick Fad and Ward Alcock, have been quite outspoken in saying that Canada should not allow Huawei into the 5G network. What is CSIS' position and what's your position on this issue? I, I asked you, sir. Minister? Yeah, and, and if it's, I, I thought your question was directed to the to, to the director, but but let me be very clear. Um, our national security establishment, which includes CSIS and CSE, has has done an excellent job of making sure the government is well informed of of the risks that various uh, entities might pose um, in a five G environment, and and so those security um, concerns have been well articulated. In addition, there are so also part of a very significant conversation that goes on between ourselves uh, and, and our Five Eyes partners. I've been involved just quite recently in, in, in extensive conversations with our Five Eyes partners with respect to this. I, I believe that th those security concerns have been very well articulated and are clearly understood by our government. We also recognize that there are a number of other considerations, both technical and geopolitical, which are also considered in the larger context. But let me be very clear. At all times, we will act in the interest of Canadians, and we will never put Canadian security or safety at risk. We have an obligation to ensure that, that the technical environment that, that Canadians uh, work within and, and enjoy in this country will always be safe. And so I'm very grateful for the excellent work done by our, 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 our security services, both at CSIS and CSE, um, in ensuring that, that our, our decisions are well-informed by, by their, their expertise and their advice um, and, and the comprehensive knowledge that they provide us with with the threat environment that exists there. And, and I, I would acknowledge that, that it is a significant threat environment um, that, that is, it informs the decision that, that, that we will make. Um, we're working very hard to make sure that we do what is right for Canadians. And I want to assure Canadians that's a decision that will be made by Canada for Canadians and not on anyone else's schedule but ours. And, but we will always act 
in the best interest of Canadians, and we will never compromise their safety and security. Uh, we, we are very well served by our security, our national security establishment in ensuring that all of our decisions are well informed by their work. Out of respect to your question that was posed directly to me, um, I would uh, first say that I uh, welcome uh, uh, enlightened opinion by uh, my distinguished predecessors. I think it's a very healthy in a democracy to have uh, these uh, debates about national security. I think you know the the country and democracy is better off having these views. Um, I have uh, very specific views about this matter. We have been reviewing uh, the, the question for, for some time. We continue to work with partners. And as you can understand, I will be providing that advice to the government. Thank you. Follow-up? Yeah, my follow-up question is about the hack today from Russia allegedly going after vaccine companies to get information about that. Uh, Mr. Blair, what's your reaction to that and how concerned are you about uh, foreign powers, Russia, China, any other countries potentially getting sensitive Canadian information about COVID-19. And to the CSIS director, can you tell us specifically what has CSIS done to make sure that Canadian companies, universities, other organizations that are working on COVID-19 are protected? And have there been any other instances that we've seen so far of foreign powers or malicious actors attempting to get that kind of information? <laughs> Yeah, if I, if I may, let, let me begin, Mackenzie. Canada takes very seriously this, the, the security of, of, of our industries. Um, the pandemic and, and the, the global uh, search for an effective vaccine um, is something that Canada is very much an important part of. Uh, but we recognize that there are uh, foreign actors, threat actors, who would attempt to uh, hack into that information and, and to exploit um, in any vulnerabilities. And, and we remain absolutely vigilant. And, and I will tell you that uh, that is the subject of, of, of continuous and ongoing, very intense scrutiny to protect Canadian interests. Um, I, actually, I'm, I'm naturally disappointed, but at the same time, not surprised that, that there are uh, foreign ent entities that would attempt to uh, exploit these these matters. And I'm very grateful for the work, particularly that CSE does in, in this, in protecting Canadian industry and Canadian interests, in the protection of, of, of intellectual property, and, and most particularly protecting Canadian interests in the development of that, that vaccine. Um, we, we will remain vigilant, and, and there's a good, very close, close collaboration that needs to be acknowledged as well between our national security establishment and Canadian industry and Canadian research uh, scientists right across uh, the country to ensure that we... we support and enable uh, those researchers and those industries uh, to operate with with uh, security and 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 to protect their 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 interests because their interests very closely align with Canada's interests and so we'll do what is necessary to protect Canadian interests David I don't know whether you wanted to comment further Thank you, Minister. Uh, I will just add that, um, as you mentioned, this is a, a global issue. Uh, they are uh, every actor in the world is looking for uh, the vaccine, and in this context, we have in Canada we have uh, very sophisticated, uh, uh, cutting-edge uh, organizations that are engaged. Uh, CSIS has been uh, been involved and engaged for for months now in uh, doing our uh, intelligence activities. So we do uh, work uh, covertly to uh, advise the government of uh, different threats related to this issue. But we also, as uh, having this insight, we are engaging very openly uh, with uh, companies. Uh, just uh, today, we were doing a webinar with um, with the Canadian Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we have uh, an outreach program that has uh, already reached over 150 companies across Canada in the biopharma sector to provide them with information about the threat they face and also about potential uh, measures they can take to protect their intellectual property in this heightened uh, threat environment. Thank you very much. And our last question is going to be from the floor. Olivia Stefanovic, CBC News. Thank you for your time this afternoon. For the director of CSIS, do you believe Canada's laws are too restrictive to allow your agency to effectively do its job in today's world? And if so, what would you like to see changed? And I'm wondering if the ministers can weigh in afterwards. Minister Blair, do you want to go first? Yeah, I, 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 think, it's, I think it's very important to acknowledge that Accountability is fundamental to our system of government. It plays a critical role in maintaining Canadians' trust 
in the, not only in their government, but in those agencies, departments, and Canadians who are responsible for keeping us safe. We expect CSIS to deliver on their mandate at all times in accordance with the rule of law and respect for the rights and freedoms that are guaranteed under the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. There's no higher law in this country than that Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and it guides all of our agencies' work, and it has to. Uh, as, as well, I, I'm, I'm confident that CSIS understands the importance of accountability and and is is fulsome in their reporting not only to me but working with uh, the the oversight agencies that we have put in place both in CIRA and and NCI cops um, there, there is that that clear acknowledgement and we benefit tremendously I think from the very sincere advice uh, that we receive in the collaboration and, and I think Canadians can draw some confidence in the very close collaboration that exists between our justice officials and our secu national security establishment we are absolutely committed to maintaining that accountability to Canadians in, in upholding at all times the rule of law. And as the law evolves, as it has in this matter discussed today, then we need to be responsive and respectful of that law and take the steps in, as, as quickly as possible to ensure that we are at all times in, in compliance. And for that, we are grateful for, for the advice and the direction that we have received from, from the courts in this matter. And, and I think it, it helps us fulfill our obligation to, to ensure Canadians that we will at all times work to keep them safe and we will at all times work to, to work within the rule of law. Compromising the rule, rule of law fundamentally has the effect of compromising the security of, of Canadians and our, our government. And, and so adhering at all times to that rule of law is, is the only way to do business. And, and I'm confident of the commitment of the national security establishment, CSIS, CSE, and their important advisors and partners in Justice Canada to ensure that we at all times uphold that law in this country so that Canadians can have confidence that, that people working hard to keep them safe will also work hard to uphold the laws and the values of Canada. I would just add for my part that there's a, a complex balance uh, that Minister Blair is referring to between the security uh, agencies, so CSIS and, and the CSE, the Justice Department and, and its lawyers, uh, and, and the federal court. And, and through the interactions of those, uh, of those actors, I think we achieve uh, an appropriate balance of protecting the rule of law, providing effective uh, safety and security uh, to Canadians, uh, and at all times respecting the Charter. CSIS is an intelligence organization, but we operate in a democratic country. That's not the case for all of the other adversaries that uh, operate in intelligence. We, uh, as ministers have said, uh, the rule of law is absolutely fundamental to what we do. The, uh, I mentioned in my statement that the uh, world is getting more complex. The threat environment is changing. The complexity of the technological environment and the geopolitical landscape is evolving. And in this matter, in this context, I would say that, you know, we, it is incumbent upon all of us to understand what are the uh, effectiveness of the intelligence services and make sure that the, uh, the proper legal framework continues to evolve with these, these matters. This is why we have such a robust you know, discussions between the departments, between the, the uh, Department of Public Safety and you know, other uh, players engaged. So I, I don't believe that the work will ever be finished. We need to continue to look at it because this is what Canadians will expect of us. They want us to be effective, but they want us to be effective in a democratic way, respecting the rule of law. Thank you. Follow up. And for Minister Blair, on the story of the hack, has this set back Canada's vaccine research? And are you concerned about possible uh, other attacks by Russia specifically? Uh, thank you for the question. I, I, I do not believe that it set, sets back our efforts, but it, it, it's, a, it's a useful reminder to all of those, those scientists and industries right across Canada who are working very diligently to, to, to find that vaccine, Canadians and, and, the, and the world needs it. Um, it's important work. Um, we, I, I, we remain concerned, and, and not just you know, the, the, the Russians targeting it, but, but other foreign actors as well. You know, there are, unfortunately, people in this world who, who don't play by the rules and, and are, represent a risk, even a threat. To, to Canadian interests and to everyone's interest. And, and so we will always work to, to protect Canadians' interests. We'll work to, 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 to I, think, I think Canadians have a great deal to contribute 
to globally to, to helping find that vaccine. We've got some outstanding people in this country working on it. We just want to make sure that they can do it safely. And, and I want to reassure them that, and Canadians that our national security establishment is well engaged in that effort to, to protect them and protect our interests so that they can do the work that we all need them to do. That's the, all the time we have today. All right, so we've been listening to this live event from Ottawa regarding Canada's spy agency, CSIS, the Canadian Security Intelligence Service. Big questions being raised over the actions of the agency. A federal judge saying CSIS had a cavalier approach.